it, I will rejoice and be glad therein. Very grateful to God just to allow us to be here today. So many things to pray for, so many people to pray for around the country, in our own neighborhood, in our own families. We just got, have so much that we have to go to God about. And it's just marvelous to know by faith he is willing and he's ready to hear us indeed and in fact he taught us not to come with many words because he knows what we have need of before we ask our asking our seeking and our knocking is his way of saying the door is open come to me at any time in any state ask me anything and i will determine by my will what's best for you and i will if you say in the name of jesus then you're giving him the right and he will give you according to what is best. He will prioritize and he will meet every one of your needs. That's the God we serve. And the wonderful thing is that each one of us can go to him because he declares to us through Paul that the only mediator between God and man is the man Christ Jesus. So whatever we go to God about, you can't get past or through or around, over or under Jesus Christ to get to God. You've got to go through Jesus. That's why the name of Jesus becomes so critical because it determines the will of God in your life. When you say in the name of Jesus, you're saying to the Father, I'm praying as the revelatory expression of the Son would pray. And that means you have now given over to his decree to operate in your life. Why? Because we don't always pray as we ought. That's Paul talking to Romans. Uh, James says we pray amiss. And many times we pray self-aggrandizing or we pray uh, narcissistically and uh, we never pray right when we pray in that kind of spirit. So he determines that for us. So, Go with me in prayer this morning, Father, we come in Jesus' name and we realize, Lord, that we are inadequate even in being able to discern properly our needs. So we come to you now and we present everything that we are to you. We present our mothers, our brothers, our sisters. We present our family in general. We present our church family. We present every need that is coming through our minds that you right now are able to attest to and know even before we prayed, you knew what we had need of. So now we pray that you will bless those who are on the forefront still, bless those who are sick, bless those who don't have the discipline. I pray God that you will help us to move into the discipline of operating in this time and the principles of your word and operating in the things that not only control the supernatural but also the natural. I pray now specifically for my brother who is battling cancer and I pray for everyone who has lost a loved one from the Johnson family. I pray for, uh, yes, I pray definitely for Brian having lost his father and for others around the country, names that we can't even call, we pray, God, that you would comfort everyone and give us a word today that will lift somebody's spirit and bring us back into that place where we understand that it's all about you. And we claim the victory now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, we're stressing that you uh, wear the mask, wear it over your nose. We're still not out of the woods yet. It's raging in Paris. My nephew is locked down in Paris. He cannot leave. And I tried to get my brother to London. And of course, he went to do a COVID test. And, and then he fell ill uh, in a hospital I haven't heard in two days. So I don't know what's happening. But our prayers, uh, yes, our prayers are that the Lord will uh, move on his behalf. Uh, I, I haven't heard, so we're in the dark. Uh, and then, of course, I'm not the only one. Others around me are facing the same difficulties, same trials. 
and so we're just praying for one another. But the pandemic is not over yet. This mask is significant. Wear it. Wear it. Carry a pocket size hand sanitizer to clean your hands throughout the day. I have one around here somewhere. Uh, also, while you're in public, remember the social distance piece. Remember to stay away from being too close to the people around you. And of course, they're telling me now that even if you're vaccinated, you can carry it to someone who is not. And that's why the mask is being worn. The mask isn't being worn primarily to keep you from getting it. The mask is being worn for you to think of your brother and your sister and protect them by wearing it. Remember now that we're praying and we're asking God about the vaccination. Yes, and we're discussing it with family. We're discussing it with the people around us and our friends. But please take a look at the science and see what the scientists are saying. You can't follow everybody who's got a statement to make about what you do with your life. Uh, we know what the disease will do. It'll ravish you. I took the vaccine and I was a little tired. I felt a little achy. Uh, my arms didn't hurt as many others. It did different things to different people. But right now, I'm energetic and uh, I'm moving around. If I'm a little bit tired, it's because I've been all night trying to stay in touch with Jamaica and those kinds of things. But that's just a temporary thing. A little sleep will fix that. So please, now, when the time comes, if you pray, if you discuss it, if you check the signs and give yourself a sense of assurance, then of course, when your time comes, when your career group, your age group comes, you'll be able to take it. Now, I didn't finish last week, so that means that I'm still dealing with the issue of the problems of today's prophetic. And uh, as you know, I was in Acts, yes, Acts chapter 8, and we were talking now, we can just go straight to 9, because we're going to Simon. Uh, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is. Notice now, the people are saying this man is is the great power of God. Not because of a message. He has absolutely no message that he's presenting, obviously. He is just working signs using sorcery, and he has bewitched the people. The word for bewitched is they are caught in amazement. And of course, you have to ask yourself, what is his advantage? Well, obviously, if he's a great one of God, he's receiving money. Uh, number two, it's self-aggrandizing, gives him a sense of significance. And at the same time, they're taking care of him. They're, they're, they're paying him. The first thing that he saw later when the apostles laid hands on the, the people who were baptized, but who hadn't received the Holy Spirit, the first thing he did was offer money. You have to trace the money. Now, one of the big ills that is declared, again, just a little shift from the exactness of the scripture changes the dynamics completely. Money is not the root of all evil because money is a necessary uh, bargaining and chip. It's necessary for functioning in a world where you have to trade and money is just deferred and gives you a greater and easier sense of trading than to have to bring uh, a, a camel in order to get a piece of meat or a camel in order to buy some groceries. So you, you, money becomes that tool 
that gives you the ability to defer, to wait, to give it for goods, and that's what money does. Now, it's not money that's the root of all evil. The Bible says uh, money answereth all, all things in the earth and in the world, of course. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So it takes it from the currency and it puts it in your heart and in your spirit. The money and nothing in of itself is evil. Paul says that. He says nothing in of itself has a problem. It's how we handle and how we think that makes things a problem. So in this case, in the case of Simon, whose name brought on the word simony, and this is anytime you decide you want to pay for your bishopric or buy any ecclesiastical favor or pay for a front seat in the church or pay to be important, anything that relates to paying in church can be traced to simony very critical that anytime you're going outside of the word and you're operating to function in a manner that makes your money significant then of course you're running into that uh, definition of simony so as we go a little bit further in reading uh they verse 10 of course this man is the great power of god and to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So notice now his behavior and his actions and dare them to him because he has no message. He is not projecting anything that extols and elevates their concepts of God. He has no message, none whatsoever. And so it's important to understand then that whenever the message comes along, because in verse 12, but whatever power he had, the greater power was the preach word of God. Because if you're going to move into the realm of spirituality, then the only way to get into the place of spirituality, not being, not spiritualism, but spirituality. When you get ready to get close to God and operate in the things of God, the principles, the word of God, to enjoy the fruit of the spirit, then you have to have a word. And the word supersedes and it's more significant, more important, and more powerful than any sign and wonder. I don't know how we got it uh, backwards. I don't know how we got it twisted. But it is interesting that it seems as if the church wants the miracles and the signs to be the ultimate proof of one's relationship with God. It's an interesting dynamic, and I'm getting it more now than I ever had it before. Because most people are saying, we don't see the signs that follow. We don't see the miracles. As if the miracles and the signs are at the zenith of one's relationship with God. Uh, let me rephrase that. It seems as if everything that we do in reference to our relationship with God is to lead us to miracles and signs. The Bible says, these things shall follow them that believe. I don't know how close they're following. I don't know how far they're following. But it seems to me that they are only necessary when you need them. And it suggests that if you believe and are operating within the principles of the word of God and walking with God, and you don't need a miracle for your life or you don't need a sign for your life, 
then your life is fine. But it also suggests, based on what I'm reading here, that you can have all the signs in the world. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you were just endeared to whoever is doing the miracles, whoever's doing the signs, because your amazement is focused on what they're doing. And when what they're doing does not put you in touch with Jesus Christ, it's still a waste of time. That's why when he turns around, even to those who are performing the work, and he says, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. And they hollered, well, didn't we prophesy in your name? It is not the prophesying in his name. It is not the healing of people. It is not the miracles that determine your eternal relationship with God. They are simply ancillary. They are simply uh, what you order. It's a side dish. It ain't the main course, if I may use that kind of vernacular. The main course is the word of God that leads and guides you into understanding and knowing Jesus Christ and having a relationship with him, walking in the light as he is in the light. Because there is no miracle way to heaven other than the cross. Hear me. There is no miracle way to heaven other than the cross and following the principles and the word of God because the word of God is God and the word became flesh the word of God is Jesus Christ to follow his word is to follow him to be in him is to be in his word to live for him is to live for his word if you love me keep my commandments to love him is to love his word to love his word is to love him to follow him is to follow his word. To follow him is to follow everything he says. Miracles come, miracles go. But he is the only constant and the only consistent one. And when you don't need a miracle, you need him. Now, I think we can take that further. And uh, I went through the whole issue of Simon. And I told you what the historians had to say about Simon. I won't repeat that. I may touch on it from here, from Irenaeus to Justin, uh, the Gnostic group. Uh, we can go through all that. But Simon held the attention of the Samaritans. The scripture said for a long time with his dazzling miracles. And that is in verse 11. A long time he had them, which means they were entrenched in the whole conceptualization of the miracle to give them a sense of significance as it related to Simon. But now the conjunction but in verse 12 changes the dynamics of their position. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning first the kingdom of God, and you can't have the kingdom of God and not have the reigning power in the kingdom who is Jesus Christ. And so they preach the kingdom of God and they preach the name of Jesus. Now, miracles, even though they're performed by the people of God, are only significant for what you're going to do on earth, the new car miraculously given to you with bad credit, the situation where you miraculously get into a house with no down payment, something is worked out through the power of God. That's all right here, to have cancer and be miraculously healed. But understand this, Lazarus was raised from the dead in a manner that was extraordinarily spectacular, but Lazarus died again. That miracle didn't keep Lazarus alive forever. It was only a function for down here. Anytime you get a miracle in any way, it's only a function for down here. And when I spend an hour working on miracles and spend five minutes preaching the word, you can see how lopsided that is. 
because what I just did was substitute amazement for eternal security in God. So you're amazed. So you had a wonderful time. But at the end of the day, if the miracle does not lead you into preaching the word of God that presents Jesus Christ as savior keeper, Jesus Christ as sanctifier, Jesus Christ as deliverer. We have it so until we even twisted the scriptures to make it sound like the presentation was about miracles. Here's what we say, by his stripes we are healed. We need to exegete that properly because the exegetical aspect of that text is dealing with Calvary and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ for the saving of the individual soul. But we make it miraculous healing. When it says by his stripes we are healed, he's talking about spiritual healing, not physical healing. Now you can accommodate the text, but please apologize when you do that. Anytime I'm going to preach and I'm going to take something out of the purity and the integrity of its position, I will tell you that I'm going to accommodate the text because I want to introduce a thought that is more inferential, uh, yeah, and maybe than experimental. It's going to be inferential because I'm going to infer something and my inference doesn't have to be right. So I'm going to accommodate the text to include prayer or I'm going to accommodate the text to include in that particular text healing. But I have to acknowledge exegetically that the purity of the presentation is spiritual in its healing. Very important. Because if you want to be a purist in the way you live for God, you have to be very pure in the way you hear God. You cannot hear him in a convoluted way and live a straight life. You can't listen crooked and come out with a straight life because how you live is contingent on what you hear. And what you hear is contingent on how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the God that you serve. Because how can they believe except they hear? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach what he should except he be sent? So understand now that the miracles should not be so dominant that the word is reduced because it took the word. It didn't take Philip coming and showing his miracles as opposed to Simon's sorcery. It, it, what are we going to have, a combat in the ring? No. The content of the preaching is described as the word in verse 5, in, in verse 4 rather, the Christos, the Christ in verse 5, in verse 12, the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus. All refer to the same reality, the salvation that is in no other name. And you can trace that back to Acts 4 and verse 12. Because the writer, Luke, in his Lucane writing, and that's L-U-C-A-N, and anytime you see that, it refers to Acts, and it refers to Luke, the gospel. And anytime he says we, that's what we call a we passage, and this is a we passage, because no, not here is a we passage, but we'll find that the next step I'm taking, we will find the we passage, and that's going to be with the woman that's doing divination. And I need to make an apology right here. In my first presentation, I kept saying that Simon had the python spirit. Wrong. I was wrong. I apologize. It's not Simon. It's the 
slave damsel in chapter 16 who has the python spirit, not Simon. Simon operated simply through sorcery and what we might call, since he's bewitching them, witchcraft. Doesn't say anything about Simon having a python spirit. Again, I want to make that clear, and I think I'll run it across the board when the time comes. It's very important to make the distinction between the two. The word then becomes that reality, for there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Given among men, very significant. So anytime you begin to preach the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus, anytime you begin to preach the word and the Christos, then understand now that you have the power to break any spirit that exists. Why? Because Paul made it clear, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation, not miracles. They are just a side piece to endorse the word of God. The word of God has preeminence over everything when it relates to salvation. It is sometimes argued uh, uh, that there was something in complete about the Samaritan's experience, that they only believed Philip and the rational content of his message without the sort of commitment that constitutes true faith. But there is really nothing in the text, however, to indicate any deficiency on their part. If you notice, Luke had wished to communicate this. If he wanted that, he would have said it. He certainly would have made it more explicit. They entrusted themselves. Hear me when I tell you. They entrusted themselves to the gospel and they were baptized, might I say, en masse. Uh, that means men and women in great numbers walked away from Simon. And this indication was Simon believed and was baptized. Now, and that's verse 13. Luke gave us more reason to question his commitment than to question the commitment of everybody else. He holds them in his bewitching amazement. The word comes and they walk away from him. But it is important to notice that there is no object given for his believing the kingdom of God, no, the name of Jesus. In fact, the only response connected to his baptism was he's following Philip everywhere. And why is he following Philip? Because he is totally entranced by Philip's miraculous signs. So his interest according to the way Luke is framing it, is not about the name of Jesus, is not about salvation, is not about changing his life, is not about getting rid of his sorcery and his bewitching powers. Obviously, it is about gaining more of what he sees as spectacular so that when the itinerant missionary preacher, when Philip leaves, he will now have gained some insight into something that he can use. Why do I say that so emphatically? Because as soon as he saw the laying on of hands, and the release of the Holy Spirit onto the masses who didn't receive it, and they began, something had to happen. The evidence of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues has always been reported 
and confirmed in the book of Acts. So we would just infer that whatever happened there was what happened on the day of Pentecost, what happened with Cornelius. And so he wanted that. He is actually following Philip, not following the gospel. He is not trying to get to Jesus. Now that brings me again to the point where miracle workers and people who operate in signs, people who make predictions, and I'm going to deal with the word soothsaying when we get over to the woman with divination, people who follow, follow them. Because you don't have to follow a preacher, a prophet, a miracle worker, all over the world, or whenever he comes to town, you got to be there. You don't have to do that when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have to follow anybody, really, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have a pastor. You have somebody who pastor, teacher. You have somebody, prophet, apostle, evangelist. But you're not just following somebody over miracles. You're following somebody who brings you through the word closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. You follow and you get so entrenched in the word until we can argue like Paul. Follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow me as I, don't follow me looking for miracles. Follow me as I follow Christ, which means if you're going to follow any preacher as they follow Christ, you have to have some idea where Christ is. So before this is over, I am going to have to speak on our gullibility to things that don't give us the kind of strength that we need when we can't find the miracle worker, when we can't find somebody to speak into our lives, when we can't find somebody to soothe, say, or give us a prediction about where we're going to go tomorrow. Because I heard a songwriter say, we know who holds tomorrow, and I know he holds my hand, which is indicative of the fact that if I am with Jesus and I have his presence, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil because he's there with me. Simon's commitment was lacking because he's trying to get more for his arsenal. He's trying to get more to be able to deal with the people. So he's following Philip, checking his miracles out and is in total amazement because of what Philip is doing. He's looking for some tricks for his trade. Now we go to another aspect because I want to show you something else. I was talking to Pastor Omar Mohammed and he brought something to my attention that I think is quite critical because it proves this point. And it takes us to a little journey in the Old Testament. And to show you the significance of the word over any action whatsoever. And I think now, and I'm going to be very careful about this. I think now it's important to understand why the Lord would say to someone who healed in his name, who prophesied in his name, and who operated in his name. And say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Because later you're going to find when he offers money, and maybe I should read that, that might help me through here, to uh, get you to understand. When he, he says, you have, Simon saw through the laying on of hands, verse 18, the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money saying, give me this, give me also this power. 
give me also this power. I want this power also. I have other powers, but I need this one. That on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Well, uh, Simon, it doesn't work like that. You can't buy this. You can't get it like that. Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Now notice 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. I propose that in the midst of all the miracles that are being done and in the midst of all the prophetic word and the prophetic word is not the true prophetic word of scripture in all of the prediction that is being done because we have focused on the 10% prediction and ignored the 90% which is to speak forth or to be a spokesman for the Lord. And any spokesman for the Lord in these last days speak of Jesus Christ. And I'm beginning to believe that because the presentation was not Christocentric, because in the same way Simon wanted a gift without a relationship, is the same way that folk are operating in gifts without relationship. That's why the Lord says, depart from me, works of iniquity. I never knew you. Because if you don't have a relationship with me, you cannot promulgate a relationship with me to anybody else. Because if all you have is a miracle and a prediction, that may or may not come to pass. And what is in it for you? Money. Self-aggrandizement. What could be in it for you that you would risk the wrath of God on your life and not get some benefit? Let me go here to Deuteronomy. And thank you, Omar, for bringing it to my attention. In Deuteronomy uh, chapter 13, and when you see Deuteronomy as opposed to Numbers, you will see quite a similarity. But Numbers, of course, is speaking to the original group that came out of Egypt. Deuteronomy second law, speaking to those who were born in the wilderness, the same God, the same word. I don't know where the prophetic changes. What God said in Numbers from what he says in Deuteronomy. Where people believe if, you don't, if God said something years ago and you say it today and it is not what God is saying today, you're lying. I, I, I can't figure that out. I can't figure that the God who speaks once has to speak something different than what he speaks in his immutability. I am beginning to think that we are reducing and desecrating the magnificence of the omniscience, immutability, omnipresence, omnipotence. I said that before. Eternalness of our God. The focus of our God has shrunk to the point where we only operate in reference to God as he does mundane things for us in this world. Where is a superlative conversation of set your affection on things which are above? Every time I look up, it seems as if Christians, because they're not Christocentric, and heavenly oriented is reducing everything about God to whatever it is that makes convenience for them. Whereas in teaching, I understand we have to suffer with him in order to reign with him. But that reign is not reigning on earth. It's reigning in the heavenlies. 
but we don't want to suffer. That's why we have heaped to ourselves miracle workers and we have come with great masses to get somebody to take the suffering off us, remove the pandemic. The pandemic is on us, but the pandemic is going to leave many of us closer to God. And if that is the case, then it's a wonderful thing. And God's not going to have somebody miraculously move it when it's serving his purpose. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Not because of the temptation, but because of what it's going to work. What it's going to do. Experience. That's why Paul said, you glory in tribulation also. Not glory in what is happening, but your glory in the results you see coming. So in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of our suffering, the prophetic word should be your suffering because God is going to make you stronger. So the encouragement that comes from the prophetic word that is the spokesperson for God, speaking to God, that you are in this place of suffering, that you may learn obedience as he had to learn obedience through the things that he suffered. So we are in with him. Very critical. Now, to show you the significance of the word and obedience to God above Miracles to show you that accuracy does not mean legitimacy, particularly if it leads you away from God and into a person. So I'm chasing behind people because of miracles and because of the performance and the excitement and the amazement. And in chasing behind them, I stop operating in the things that are heavenly, in the things that lead to the fruit of the Spirit being expressed in my life. Because I want the gospel to lead me to miracles. Wrong! Miracles support the gospel. I'm getting ready to close, but I want to read this. Deuteronomy 13, to those who were born in the wilderness, if there arise among you, a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and prophet is Nabi and 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 when you see the word Nabi it, it speaks of an individual who is a spokesman for God and the words that are important here of course is sign and of course you got dreamer here and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and that from the Hebrew is mope. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Now the sign and the wonder coming to pass is accuracy. But then he says, Let's go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Now, the prophet and the dreamer, they were accurate. But they led them away from the word of God through the accuracy of the dream or the accuracy of the prediction or the divination. And they led them away from God. Lord, have mercy. Here's what the Lord says. Because they're accurate doesn't make them legitimate, so thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For here's why. The Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. 
Do I need to explain it? Let me tell you what happens to that prophet. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. Now, please tell me, what is in it for a prophet or a dreamer to risk? I mean, you're just going to get up and have a prophetic word and tell Israel to serve the wrong God or, or go to gods that you don't know, get into something you don't know, when you have had the word of God presented to you, what is in it for that prophet? Two things. If I were to take Simon, self-aggrandizement and substance and money. Self-aggrandizement and money. He would be a complete fool or she to risk the wrath of God just out of a whim with nothing coming their way. When I know that the root of all evil, this being the epitome of what's evil, to come in the name of God, signs and wonders and miracles, and then lead somebody away from that very God who brought you out of bondage. The very God, that word, if you follow and walk in his word, goodness and mercy will follow you. You give all that up to follow somebody into something that is adverse because they were accurate accurate but not legitimate and it becomes very very problematic because the center and the legitimacy of any presentation is to focus on the one who hung on the cross died that you and I might have a right to eternal life died that we might have a relationship with him and that's why any way you praise him and any way you worship him you worship him in spirit and in truth. And you find sweet and wonderful things to say about him because he is God all by himself. And there is no thrill greater than when somebody is presenting Jesus and him crucified and speaking of the power of God that overcomes every situation and every circumstance that life can bring and give you the power that even if you're in the fire, you know he's in there with you. And if you're in the fire, you cannot be consumed because his power is greater than any power when his presence is with you. You want to be in the presence of people who have power for miracles, but you rather and should rather be in the presence of the great God who died on Calvary's cross, bought you with his blood to sanctify you, to justify you, to reconcile, to redeem you, to propitiate you, and to make you his own to make you a joint heir with him to bring you to a place where when you walk with him demons tremble you don't have to send for somebody to deliver you when God is in you all by himself and when he has made you the temple that he dwells in not visits but he dwells in and he declares to you that you don't look up to anybody but me yes you respect those that I have called to the deliver the word but you are a part of my body and because you don't have their function doesn't mean that you're not significant and anybody who will lead you away from me is not worthy of anything that I have blessed them with 
And I'm here to tell you that it's Jesus and Jesus who we need to follow and walk after. It is Jesus whose name we need to call. It is Jesus that we need to hold up in life. It is Jesus that we need to give our mind, our soul, our bodies to. That's why he declares, love me with all your might. I'm testing you whenever somebody comes around who seems to have powers that you have never never seen. Don't ever let them cause you to walk away from me for any reason. Don't ever let them cause you to feel like money is everything, like a big house and a big car is all that. Don't ever let them cause you to feel like private jets make you superior or good and wonderful clothes make you better. It doesn't matter what you have. If you have me, you have the power of the universe. You have the power of eternal life. You have a heaven to go to and an eternal walk with me is better than anything ephemeral. I need us to lift up the name of Jesus. I need us to declare him as God of gods and Lord of lords. I need to declare him as the king of kings and oh yes, I need to declare him as altogether lovely. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. I need to declare him as the savior of mankind, the keeper of everyone who will go to him and come to him in power because he is God all by himself. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Rofika. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sikanu, Jehovah Makadish. He is God all by himself. And that's who we need to preach. Stop fooling around with the children of God and preach Jesus. Jesus the sustainer. Jesus the keeper. Jesus from A to Z. Everything you want him to be. I am that I am. That's who we need to preach. And he will bring us out of every situation into the place that he wants us to be. When your money is finished, he's still there. When your house burns down, he's still there. When your car is crashed, he's still there. When your clothes are outdated, he is still there. When everybody walks out on you, he is still there. And when you stare death in the face, he will tell you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus, 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 that's who you should be after. God bless you today. Heaven smile on you, and I want to say to you, to all who are hearing my voice, I present Jesus. I present Jesus who is superlative to any miracle you can ever have because the greatest miracle that has ever been wrought was Jesus hanging on the cross to save you, save you from an overdose, save you from excessive lascivious, licentious, living, save you and bring your mind into perfect peace in turbulent times to give you that settled peace, to give you the comfort of a relationship with him that goes deeply into your spirit so that the things on the surface are insignificant compared to the riches that's flowing through your spirit. I want you to have that. And I present Jesus because he is the only one who can give that. And I want to present him to you. I want you to, to believe on him. Miracles go by sight. Miracles go by hearing. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I want you right now, wherever you are, to open your heart to him. I want you to look at your life and realize through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit's there right now. And here is how you know he's there. You feel like making contact. You want to hear more. And you want to touch 
somebody who can inform you and instruct you. You want to give your life to him. I'm convicted the way I'm living. Something that was said today has touched me in a way that I want to change my life. Something that had been said today is moving in me. And I want to get away from the confusion in my life. And yes, I have money. Yes, I have things. Yes, I can go to any place I want to go. But I want to get away from the confusion in my life. I want this turmoil that's in me to settle down. I want, I want to have peace within myself. I, I'm tired of seeking it and going after it on the outside and running it down and thinking I got it here and it, and it moves somewhere else. I think I have it here and then it moves and think this is it and then that's not it. Jesus is the answer that you need. And in this mode that you're in right now, right now, where the Holy Spirit is talking to you, I want you to call 844-267-7729. 844-267-7729. Somebody is there right now, ready to minister to you the things of, of God, ready to pray with you, ready to talk to you, just to listen to you. As the conviction of the Spirit of God is upon you now, heavily upon you, and the Lord is saying, come my child, come unto me. I don't care where you were last night. I don't care whose bed you got out of. I don't care what situation you were in. He is waiting right now. Pick up that phone and call 844-267-7729. If you can't call it this minute, jot it down, write it down, and call it when you can. Somebody will be there. But right now is the time. Right this minute. While the Holy Spirit is lodging in your heart. It doesn't matter. The blood, the blood of Christ Jesus is over the door. And the blood of Christ Jesus, when it was over the door, and he said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It didn't matter what is in the house. Put out the marijuana cigarette. Put the liquor bottle aside and call that number. That number. Get out of the arms that you're in and go to the bathroom and call that number. Whatever state you're in right now, he can address it with his presence, with his saving power, with his saving grace. Jesus wants you calling right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is our, it is our desire based upon the influence of the Holy Spirit that you will reach right now and consummate this deal for the soul of this man or woman. Let your blood right now, agarazo, Buy them out of the slave market right now. Satan has had them bound for years and years. And the confusion in their own mind imploding and exploding. I pray God that right now you will overcome everything in their minds and draw them to you. And we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. And we thank you for it. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. 844-267-7729. If you need us for any other, for those who can, who need a multiplicity of other things, you email us prayer at cityofrefugela.org and we will answer. We thank God for you. We thank God for this day, for this hour, for this word. We have a little more to go on this subject. Don't want to run it totally into the ground, but it's essential that when we all get back together, we're going to get back together with the right disposition towards our Christocentric behavior and, and need. We, 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 we need it. I want to thank you, really want to thank you for your generosity and always responding to the call and your giving. You have been generous through these times and we thank God for you and we believe that the Lord is going to bring this to an end. I'm learning my lessons. I'm, I'm getting my lessons in the pandemic. I pray you're getting yours. 
I believe you are, I am. We, we're left with no choice but to understand the discipline that goes with following certain rules and the discipleship that goes in science and everything else. But I want to thank you for what you have done and what you are doing. And we are appreciative and we believe God will continue to bless you and to help you to meet all of your needs. But your wisdom has to be applied. Wisdom has to be applied. He can provide the substance, but it's in your hand how you operate that substance. And we're not asking you to jump over the cliff financially, fall over the cliff financially, because as the Lord makes ways for you, he makes ways for his church. He makes ways, yes. If he gives vision, he gives provision. And in many instances, he blesses you to bless us and certainly to bless the house of God that you're a part of, and you have done it. You have done it. And I don't want you to sit around and be in guilt because you haven't done as much as you would like to do. Don't do that. Thank God for what you can do and operate within that with joy, and uh, the Lord will make the difference in your life, and he will make the difference in the life of the assembly called the City of Refuge. Don't forget now, I'm, sh I'm shifting again. Father, bless financially. Work it out. Work it out. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget the City of Refuge is now a free drive-through COVID testing site. Free drive-through. Get it done quickly. If you want to, you can register on our site, cityofrefugela.org, and you can make an appointment. But if you walk up, you are welcome. If you drive up, you are welcome. You don't have to have an appointment for them to treat you. Again, as I go off the air, please be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Social distance when you're in public. Pray about the vaccination. Consult your family members. Do those things. Do it in a community. Because until this whole world is done, this thing will keep lingering and lingering and lingering until we have a solution. They got over it in 1918. This is 2021. If they could do it in 1918, it can be done in 2021. Every science that man operates in has always been there since God created the earth. We just caught on. But God has done it all. What you call a miracle when you see a plane get off the ground. Oh my God, what a miracle. It's just science. That's all that is. It's just science. When the doctor prescribes the right medicine and the body turns around, you can take a pill that lowers your blood pressure. Amen. It would be nice if I laid hands on you and you never had to take the pill because believe it or not, that pill messes with your kidney. It would be better if I laid hands on you and and my faith and your faith mingle and it goes away. That would be lovely. But that's only for living down here. No matter how I get your blood pressure regulated through prayer, something's going to kill you. Something's going to kill me no matter. I do everything. Uh, my friends say I eat like a rabbit. <laughs> and something's going to kill me. I'm 71. My days are numbered. Anyway, God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Stay with Jesus, get close to Jesus, and let whatever else support it, but don't live for that. Live for Jesus Christ. God bless. My God, wasn't that a dynamic word? I'm reminded of John 15, where Jesus says, if you abide in me and allow my word to abide in you, you should ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. I pray that through obedience and faith that this word is able to abide in you so you can bear fruit in your life. Now, at this point in time, we're going to move into prayer. We have prayer at cityofrefugela.org that if you have anything that you want to pray, go ahead and email it in to us. But if not, go ahead and now dial in on the number of the, uh, at the bottom of the screen. We have ministers and pastors ready to 
meet you at your appointed need. We want to pray with you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you feel that conviction of repentance to repent and give your life to him, we have trained ministers ready to meet you at your point and need. My God, I'm so thankful that you in tuned in today. So now I don't want you to forget our service times. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and also Wednesdays at 12 noon. And if you're tuning in, it's not too late to give. We still have our five ways to give. So if you want to be generous because God has placed um, something on your heart to be able to be a blessing to us that we may be a blessing to others, please, you can exercise any one of these five ways to give to be a blessing to us so we can be the blessing to other people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now, hey, you got the word, you got the worship, you're empowered. Now let's go ahead and pray this thing out and we're gonna meet at the appointed time. Come on. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have met us faithfully with your word. I pray for my brothers and sisters that you may edify them, enrich them, and empower them. That this word may be mixed with faith. That they can go out and conquer what they have to conquer. That they can overcome the things that they're dealing with and enjoy the blessed life that you have given to them. So we thank you. We pray that you keep us at the appointed time. We pray, Lord God, that you give us the wisdom on when to open up. So, Lord, Lord God, we thank you. We ask that people are still safe. I pray that they still wear their masks, exercise social distancing, and wash their hands, that they may be safe, that their co-workers, their family, and friends may be safe. So we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm so thankful that you tuned in. Cannot wait to see you next Sunday. God bless.